So today we are joined by redshirt junior running back Makai Johnson of Marist. Thanks for joining us, Makai. No problem, man. Thanks for having me, Mike. Absolutely, absolutely. So first question that we want to ask is, you know, what have what have you been doing to stay in shape as a college running back during these uh, crazy times? Uh, so right now um, we're on a pause from all team activities and workouts and. Um, and also, there's a pause on campus, so that means the weight room's closed and everything's closed. So um, we've just going, been going to the local gym, uh, my housemates and I, and, you know, just right. following, the, following the routine and, and stuff like that. Um, but other than that, before that, we were on the field for a little bit. Um, you know, we, didn't, we, got, we got to helmets. Um, that was about it. Um, you know, we were just going over plays, you know, banded workouts, stuff like that, simple stuff. And, um, right. yeah, so, but that's it. That's what the uh, deal is right now, you know, mm -hmm. just everything online and trying to get into the local gym as much as we can. Right, right. I feel like, um, you know, that's how, that's how it's been. That's how it's been at Nichols, too. And as coaches, we've kind of really just relied on the guys to make sure that they're going and doing their own thing. And we kind yeah. of relied on of the older guys to just kind of uh, bring bring along the younger guys. So have you kind of seen yourself in that role at all, just kind of helping out the younger guys, bringing them along, bringing them to the gym, like stuff like that? I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, um, I, I always, you know, I always am a fan of the younger guys and bringing them in and, you know, helping guys out and not so much. I don't even like saying showing the ropes, but, you know, just yeah. – you know, just putting guys on to certain stuff and, you know, letting them do their thing after that. And, um, you know, uh, it's just good to have somebody that's that's um, older than you and stuff yep. like that to just be able to see how things are going and moving and stuff like that. So I try to be that as much as I can for the younger guys. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. That's good. That's good. That's how I try to be um, when I – you know, as a veteran in college. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what are some ways you've been adjusting to these times with, you know, like COVID and how it's just, it's different now. It's not the same. I mean, to me, honestly, it's not much of an adjustment. I mean, it's just, that, you know, it's kind of do what you got to do, um, keep it pushing and, you know, everything's temporary. That's how I look at it. And um, I mean, yeah, it's not much of adjustment. It's just online classes, really. And, you know, just working out. There's <laughs> not, not much to it. Like, yeah. that's what it is. But um, I mean, probably the biggest adjustment is just probably the mask, honestly, and just not being able to do what you want to do um, outside of those two things I listed, you know, just go out to eat and the simple stuff like that. and um, um, just restrictions, you know, if you have a, if you have like my grandmother and stuff, I live back home, my grandmother and stuff like that. So, you know, high risk, uh, um, whatever you want to call them. I don't want to say it like that, but you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that's that. But, um, yeah, adjustment, there wouldn't be much of one for me, honestly. Yeah, no, that's funny. That's that kind of exactly the answer I was kind of expecting you from that. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, you've, you've always been someone um, from when I've known you, you're not a complainer. Like, you're just going to you're just gonna adjust and you're going to keep going, which kind of yeah. brings me to my next qu um, question is um, just kind of going off that. Like, obviously, you're one of, definitely one of the hardest workers I've ever been around, right? So um, just kind of talk about the, the value of work ethic and kind of just what that's done for you. I mean, for me, work ethic is everything, you know what I mean, in terms of, on the football field and getting to where I wanted to be. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can have all the talent in the world and, and no work ethic, and you can have no talent in the world and all the work ethic, you know what I mean? And it wasn't like I was the most athletic guy when I was younger, the most talented guy. I mean, I was a great football player. Um, I was a great athlete, but, you know, I wasn't the best out there. And I knew that at a young age, and I worked my ass off. Oh, I don't mean to swear, but you know what I mean? Um, that's what that was. So, yeah, I mean, I could say that work ethic is a big deal to me. Um, 
and to a lot of guys I surround myself with. Because uh, I think that's just that's just how it should be. And in the game of football, that's what you need. And life as well. I mean, that's what it taught me. It taught me. Besides life, I applied what I, you know, to my work ethic in football to um, life. And that's also a reason why I'm at the position I'm in now. So yeah, Exactly. You want, to, you want to surround yourself with, you know, others who are on the same mission as you. Yeah. You know, so uh, that's, that's good stuff. Um, so let's talk, talk about uh, your, your experience at, at Maris so far and, you know, what it's like to, to be able to play D1 ball on Saturdays. Yeah. So, I mean, it's always been a goal to play uh, D1 ball. Um, and when I had the opportunity to play at Maris, um, I came and I played. I started playing as a freshman. Um, got into, got hurt sophomore year. My uh, fracture, my sternum coming around the corner. I actually ran over the safety though. So, it was, you know, it, that kind of bounces it out. But yeah, came around the corner. Um, it was just a freak accident fracture my sternum and honestly I wasn't even worried about it. people like oh da, da, da. I'm like yeah man like it happened it is what it is but um so that happened and then you know junior year came back I was starting I think it was a fourth game in and then I, I um had the MCL injury um and it was the same thing you know I came back and and um now I feel I'm 100% now but you know going through all that at the same time it was um I could say it was it was difficult because you know um, Maris isn't the easiest school in the world, you know what I'm saying. And um, I could say I had some rough times here and there, family issues, whatever, whatever. So you know, um, I could say it was a little bit it was a little bit difficult, but I mean I can't say it was the worst, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I I'm ha I had a good time and I'm enjoying myself and um, I'm playing ball and I'm healthy now, so you know there's not much I could really complain about now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then, um, well, since you're healthy now, what uh, what what do you want to accomplish next season? Oh man, <sighs> everything, everything. I got just got to leave it all out there. That's what it's the last season. That's my technically, you know, my senior season. Um, last year with the the kids I came with in with since freshman year. Um, the seniors that I came with with freshman year, you know what I'm saying? It's just, just got to ball out for everybody, ball out for myself, you know? And I, I don't, I'm not the type to really set goals, but, you know, I just want to, I just go out there and play football and just <laughs> do what I got to do. So um, I just want to have the best season I had um, at Marist College and in my collegiate career and go out with a bang and set myself up for, um, life after marriage and stuff like that in terms of football and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Got to, you know, just put it, everything out there for senior year, you know, got to, yeah. I know you will. Um, so just kind of, let's just talk about, you know, your development uh, throughout the year. What are some things that uh, have really helped you personally, whether it's, you know, maybe some things in the weight room, field work, like things like that, just kind of some things that helped with development. Uh, as a football player you mean like training and stuff like that yeah like yeah you know training um you know what like what got what helped with the development to get to get you to the football player that you are today um probably start off with the dorchester eagles pop warner team <laughs> I, I, I mean anybody who knows the dorchester eagles in the massachusetts area i mean even the northeast area knows you know uh what was going on over there especially um six to ten years ago you know what i'm saying oh, yeah. um yeah so that laid the foundation um i was just hungry came up through middle school hungry didn't get a chance to play ninth and tenth grade i was hungry went to uh, got a chance the opportunity to play at belmont high i was hungry um didn't didn't start my uh junior year um i think I think that running back actually went to U Penn. He was, he was a good running back, Max Jackson. That was my boy too. But um, or Jones, yeah, J Jones, Jones, Max Jones, yeah. Um, and then so I was, came in my senior year. I was snapping, no offers, twenty-seven touchdowns, almost two thousand yards. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. So I was hungry, man, and um, went to prep school, balled out at prep school. 
um, Coach Taylor, Coach Stone over there at Canterbury got me right. And then um, got an opportunity at Marist. Marist had a couple of, had a couple other opportunities and um, chose Marist and then came in freshman year and then took off from there. Right, right. So that was the development, really. There's a couple other factors, but, you know. Okay, what about, you know, what about, what about the off season? You know, how many, how many days a week? How many days a week in training? How many, come on, how many? Mike, how many you, Mike, Mike, I was trying to do it. You don't be, man. <laughs> I'm always working. But, um, I mean, I, at one point it was seven days a week. I, I had a lot of, a lot of the older, older guys I trained with and, and trainers telling me I had to relax. But there was one point I was going seven days a week, probably two to three times a day, bro, and just not even taking naps in my bed because I didn't want to – I didn't have the – I didn't even have the uh, strength to take a shower. So I was just laying on the floor, living on the floor, you know. But, I mean, I loved it. I love it. I still love it. But it just it just comes with, you know, getting older. And I never thought I'd, I would say that. You know, when I was younger, I never thought, oh, yeah, da, da, da. But, you know, you get older and, you, you know, you have to – I realized some things and stuff like that. So I had to, you know, but I still go probably now. I still go when I'm back home this summer, probably five to six days a week. You know what I'm saying? At least two times a day. And then, and that's that. And I get the, I get my, I get my movement training in. I get my speed training in. I get whatever training I need to do. Cause I know now with all these years, I've been doing this since I was, it's not even that long, but I've been doing this since I was probably 15 now. I'm 22. So, you know, now I've learned some things right. and um, from a lot of people. And I've seen how things work and I see how things don't work and I apply it to myself and then that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, that's awesome. That's just, I think it's good for, you know, a lot of younger athletes just to hear like the amount of sacrifice, the amount of the amount of work that you actually have to put in some, so yeah, a lot so of people don't understand that. It is. You know, as it is. Uh, it's a lot of work, and I'm st I'm still not even where I want to be. You know what I'm saying? It's just more work, man. And that's all you could do is just keep working. Yep, yep. That's all it is. Yeah. So this next question, you kind of touched on it a little bit in that mm -hmm. last answer, but uh, we want to know what your prep year was like, and do you recommend it? I definitely recommend the prep year um, if you need to take it. Um, Especially uh, when I was coming up in the Massachusetts area, it was a little shaky, um, the recruiting process. Um, now it's, it's picking up a lot. I know guys going all over the country and stuff like that. Um, and even with, you know, a lot, a lot of the smaller schools and stuff like that, it's even picking up more. Like guys weren't even getting offers from even like Nichols and stuff like that that I knew could have been playing at, at schools, you know. You know what I mean, um, Mike? But um, – yeah, I'm, I, 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 I recommend a prep year for those who need it um, eligibility-wise, grades-wise. Um, just another year of development if you didn't get the starts you wanted, if you didn't get the snaps you wanted, if you didn't get the uh, recruitment attention you wanted, you know what I mean? Um, or if you, yeah, if you honestly think you, you know yourself could do better. If you know yourself that you can – do better than your senior year you did in high school and you need an extra year to prove yourself, then go do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a big thing of being able to prove yourself and make yeah. sure you did it right. Yeah, no, I I think I think you put it perfectly exactly, you know, especially like for yourself where you were you were a late bloomer, you you know, needed that kind of extra look and it really I'm sure it helped you with your development too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's where I definitely agree with you where um, I would recommend it too for guys if they kind of need that extra year. Um, yeah. to, you know, take it. Um, yeah. So then, kind of even going back um, before that, kind of, uh, what's what was your experience like being from Dorchester, uh, going to these different schools as a, as a Meco student? Um, it was a different experience, you know what I'm saying. But I never really thought of, of it as a different experience at the time when I was in it. Now I look back and I was like, I don't know, sometimes I'm like, damn, like, um, I was just away a lot, you know what I mean? And um, I don't know, I'm just blessed to have the opportunity of my parents and my loved ones who took care of me, put me in positions to be where I'm at now, you know what I'm saying? And 
sacrifice what what they had to do to put me in good schools and put me in good after school programs and situations um where you know it was it turned out how it did you know what i'm saying um so yeah it was just i was i was gone i was at i was at bbnn from kindergarten to sixth grade you know what i mean i was going to school in cambridge um so i wasn't like i was in the only time i was really in in dorchester was was playing sports playing right. football and going to the ymca and stuff like that so you know i kind of um I was ha- I was in it was in both worlds for me, you know what I'm saying? At an early age I thought it was just normal. I was like, okay, this is that, this is whatever. This is just this is what we're doing. So it kinda always like that. And even in high school it was just whatever, like, you know what I'm saying? And then I look back now and I'm like, wow, like I was blessed to have the opportunities that I was I was I was given, um, you know, by the, the ones who took care of me. Yeah. And I feel like I feel like for you and for what it does for a lot of people, it gives you a lot of perspective because you're going to different schools, you're going to school with kids from different areas, things like that. Yeah. And like for someone like you, I feel like it, it's definitely it was definitely a benefit in that way. And uh, as far as socially and everything, and I feel like you're able to talk and to, you know, relate to almost anyone from anywhere. So I think that's definitely been a good thing for you. Yeah. You know, absolutely. And that's that's all football is, too. You know what I'm saying? You just. You meet, you meet, we have guys from all over the country. Uh, you know, it's just, it just is easier to bond with guys, and you know what I'm saying, and respect, and you know what I'm saying, what other people come from, you know what I'm saying. So, um, yeah, definitely, I agree with what you just said. So, um, do you have any advice for high school players that want to continue playing in college? I mean, you were in those shoes one one time, so. What can you say to them? I know everybody says it. First thing everybody says, I'm going to say it too. And I've been a culprit of it. Still am a culprit of it. But I'm going to tell you, one, the first thing is grades. Get the best grades you can, develop the best habits you can in high school. So by the time you get to college, you've already developed those habits from ninth to 10th grade for four years. So it's the same thing as you developing your habits on the field, you come into college, you do the same thing, you do keep developing there. You already have your foundation where you're not even worried about scrambling, you know, trying to figure stuff out when you get there freshman year, you know what I mean? Um, and then I'll just say, I'll say that. Um, and then whatever is important to you outside of football, you know, I'm obviously everybody says football, but whatever is important to you outside of football as well. Um, and um, just taking care of yourself and taking care of your family and, you know, focusing on what's important for you because everybody's going to be pushing and pulling and especially if you want to be an athlete and wherever you go to school, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be a lot. It's stressful for wherever you go. So, you know, just make sure um, sometimes, you know, prioritize, prioritize yourself a little bit. I'm not saying be selfish and be cocky and be, you know what I'm saying, but just Make sure you're good at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Because I think, especially guys like now, like in high school and everything, I feel like they're too worried about, you know, what's, what's what offers does this kid have? What offers does he have? Like, it doesn't matter. Just, yeah. just work by yourself. Figure just ball out. Exactly. Just ball yeah. out. Just get, your, get yourself figured out. Figure out what you want to do instead of worrying about what, what John has for an offer or what yeah. he has for – uh, grades, whatever, you know, just focus on yourself. Hey, you could, you can watch my tape 2016 at Belmont. That's, that might be top two, not two in the state that year. And I wasn't getting, and I wasn't worried about nobody else. And I still didn't have offers. Yeah. You could add me on that one, whoever's watching this. Go watch the tape. Senior year highlights. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put it, I'll make sure I put it in the, uh, in the, in the blog. Got you. <laughs> That's good stuff. So, what do you what is what do you have uh, planned for your time after Maris? Say that again. What do you have planned for you know once once you play your final season, once you graduate? I want to play professional football. It's my first thing, you know. That's what I've been working at since you know seven years old now. Um, 
So, you know, um, I got to do what I got to do to get myself in the position in the best positions possible to be able to do that. Um, and then that's that. And then after that, you know, I'm a business major. Um, so I have, a, I have a couple of different ideas, you know, in that, in that aspect of things that I can do. And um, so that's how you say you say my plan B, you know, and um, I don't really, yeah, like I said before, I don't really make goals. I don't really make plans, but that that's what, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on right now. And that's what um, my aspirations are. So that's what I'm going to try and go do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you uh if you had to pick a NFL team, which one are you going to? Come on, man. New England Patriots. That's <laughs> right. Wait, I, I should have just said next question. <laughs> I had to ask it. And then uh last question we got for you is do you have any personal hobbies outside of uh football? <sighs> um Right now, what I'm big into, a big hobby of mine is day trading. I've been day trading a lot. Um, that's a hobby of mine right now. And, um, you know, working out, I guess, if that's outside of football. Um, yeah, and just brainstorming, you know, just different different ways to get money. Money's always on my mind, you know what I'm saying? I think that's everybody's, everybody's kind of, I kind of out of motive. But, yeah, that's that, so. That's a great hobby. So <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm not greedy or anything. No, I'm just you know <laughs> trying to get this bread. That's good. That's good. Um, but yeah, that's you know that's all we got, Makai. Again, appreciate you coming on, taking the time. Got you, bro. Anytime, like always, a pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely.